So in the, um, there are many studies in adult mice and some studies in adult cohorts showing that microbiota is affecting immune system function. Now how microbiota is affecting immune development? You have very, very few data from about that and many have just extrapolated data from a very well developed uh, human or mice to the neonate. So I think that currently <laughs> the answer is we know very little thing. What I would like to give as a message is that a microbiota impact on an adult immune system is absolutely not the same as impact on a neonate. And we have to understand why. And all the immune system, the barrier is very different. And so currently we see, of course, much more flexibility in the neonate so that you can more uh, have long term consequence that you don't see if you act on an adult. So uh, another <laughs> information is um, microbiota has certainly non-specific effect. It can just increase the growth of the lymphoid organ, increase the development of immune tissue in, in the gut. But at the same time, it had some uh, skewing effect, differentiation of certain response. And some bacteria like, looks like to induce more regulatory uh, response. This is like the bifidobacteria, which are promoted by breastfeeding. And other um, much more pro-inflammatory, uh, such as uh, segmentus uh, SFBs. So what is also known from the adult, there are some uh, bacteria that have can can have some specific effects. Some bacteria favor more um, regulatory response, meaning no allergy, no inflammation in the gut, and maybe also no inflammation in your whole body. And other bacteria are more pro-inflammatory. And of course, it's nice to understand why some bacteria do that, why the other do bad things. And here comes the nutrition, um, because bacteria can be considered as a, um, machine to produce uh, metabolites that influence your immune function locally and, and systemically. And in particularly, short-chain fatty acid produced by some bacteria are very important for regulation. And so in early life, how do you get those short-chain fatty acid from bacteria while well, you have no bacteria in your gut? So then the magic of breast milk comes. Breast milk brings oligosaccharides that favor the growth of some bacteria that are capable to metabolize those famous sugar into regulatory molecules. So that's a kind of answer to your big question. <laughs>
Uh, so vitamin A is certainly well known as important for prevention of uh, infectious disease in the developing country, work, um, mainly probably by its effect on the barrier, the gut barrier, the skin barrier, and important for growth. Um, in all well-developed country, as we say, vitamin A is not that study in the field of prevention of infectious disease. However, um, we have been looking at the role of vitamin A in early life um, because we, we found that the neonate in very first day, even with breast milk, is not capable to mount torrents. Um, whatever you give, you give the milk, the immunomodulatory factor, the egg antigen, it does not induce tolerance and prevention of allergy. And we have found that this is linked to a physiological lack of vitamin A in a neonate. This is found in human cohorts, in the mice, it's a very conserved observation. And if we give supplement of vitamin A to a neonate, suddenly we modify many characteristics of a neonate. We make him more mature, like a three weeks old mice, and, and suddenly it becomes capable to respond to antigen transfer through breast milk. So vitamin A, to summarize, in developed country may be important to uh, help the immune system of the immature neonate immune system to mount torrents. And so I propose this could be a, a good target to look at.